Uh, good evening. So I also want to begin uh, my presentation by recognizing that we're currently on uh, uh, unceded Algonquin territory. That being said, uh, two education systems currently uh, operate in Ontario, the federally governed First Nations Reserve System and the provincial system, which also serves on and off reserve Indigenous students. Uh, the recently ratified Anishinaabeg education system will ratify its own education law in 2018, creating a third system. Given the three governance, syst governance systems, how can good governance and education be me measured, aside from just funding, and why does it matter? Well, first, the literature suggests that top-down uh, authoritarian governance styles are less effective than governance approaches that distribute leadership activities and incorporate feedback uh, and input from local schools and communities. Secondly, the communities which an education system serves must view it as both legitimate and appropriate uh, in both a legal and cultural sense. So an understanding of legitimacy develops the relational uh, trust uh, for distributed leadership uh, amongst governors, educators, and the communities. I think it's fair to say uh, that, generally speaking, this characterizes the relationship between the provincial system uh, and non-Indigenous communities. However, a nation-to-nation -nation approach is specifically required uh, for legitimacy and relational trust in the Indigenous context, such that First Nations can govern uh, themselves or choose to collaborate or partner with other governments. Unfortunately, this is not the current provincial or federal practice, where they attempt to persuade First Nations more often than seeking meaningful collaborative partnerships in education. When legitimacy and relational trust are satisfied, it allows on-the-ground uh, educators all the way up to system governors, uh, in addition to the communities they serve, to take pride in and take ownership of the direction of education development. So education programming can therefore be supported system systemically and sustainably at each change of implementation and evaluation. The final criteria for good governance is that programming must be backed by evidence. For example, there is currently no evidence to suggest that the systemic lack of support uh, for Indigenous language and culture and curricula by the federal and provincial systems contributes to Indigenous student achievement. Contrarily, research, uh, research suggests that bilingual and bicultural students who are not only proud of both traits, uh, but who also learn in a culturally situated context have higher achievement rates than otherwise. Now, meeting the criteria for good governance is possible, uh, as is shown by the self-governing uh, Mi'kmaq education system. Uh, Mi'kmaq education has been governed by the Mi'kmaq for 20 years, but they have also partnered with Nova Scotia uh, in certain areas, which is more reflective of a nation-to-nation -nation relationship. Uh, curricula and governance is, is culturally appropriate and increasingly includes uh, the Mi'kmaq language. Consequently, the educational outcomes for Mi'kmaq students are amongst the highest uh, for Indigenous students in Canada, and graduation rates have even surpassed those of the Ontario education system, as you can see on the chart there. It didn't probably make too much sense at first, but that uh, is the reason for displaying that. And that uh, is why good governance matters, and especially in an Indigenous context. Thank you very much.